Today we are taking a look at the Nobles ODR-1. You know, this is the Nashville pedal, but I think it does a lot more than that. I think it does a really cool swampy blues thing, and I think it also does a really cool sort of cranked Marshall sort of vibe in there. Um, this pedal was made famous by some of those top Nashville uh, session guys, Tom Bukovac, Guthrie Trap, you know, you'll see it on all the Nashville boards now. And then it expanded out to, uh, like, everyone's board. This pedal is super cheap. I bought it new years ago for, like, 120 bucks, and you could find them used for less than that. The original ones are up in that, like, 800 and beyond price range, which is a little silly for a $120 pedal, uh, especially since there's so many variations on it now and uh, that may have solved some of its problems. One I'm gonna show you is the Karma ODR-10. This one was modeled after Tim Pierce's personal ODR-1. Uh, so Tim says it sounds exactly like his. So his is an original sort of 80s run, I think it was. So if you're looking for that, this might be the answer. Apparently as the runs went on, like many um, manufacturers do. There's slight variation, so maybe Tim's doesn't sound exactly like Tom's, and Tom's doesn't sound exactly like Guthrie's. Uh, another is, uh, maybe theirs doesn't sound exactly like John Shanks's. So, uh, this is the Vemoram Shanks, what do they call it, ODS one. Uh, like all Vemoram pedals, you're gonna pay a premium, because they're coming in as an import from Japan. They have a uh, brass enclosure. Uh, they sound really good. All of the Vemaram pedals I've played have a expensive sound to them in that they sound big and just a little more bold, like almost like they're pulling more power than the pedal sitting next to it. This one has two dip switches, uh, one for to control the bottom end and one to control the saturation. I'm not exactly sure about the saturation, but to be honest, both of these sound like they have a little bit of the clean blend that comes through. I mean, I hear when their green is fully cranked, it still sounds like, man, is there a little bit of that coming through on some of those spankier notes? I totally could be wrong about that. Uh, but this is nice because you could completely tailor the bottom end uh, out of like, this is pretty balanced for a big bottom end. This is a little leaner and sort of smoother and softer and rounder overall. This has a little more like crack bite and is very muscular sounding. And then you could dial in the amount of bottom end, which brings us to the way huge STO, uh, which I guess you could say is George Tripp's take on the ODR one. And man, this box is so small. It's part of their smalls line. And there's no other controls other than the standard uh, volume drive and tone. They call it spectrum on here because it's not exactly a tone uh, knob the way like a Tube Screamer tone knob works. You can dial all of these in to nearly, you could get really close to match like the Bukovac setting on an ODR-1. And then they're all slightly different. So I don't know. Uh, but then you'll hear when they get fully cranked and you start to turn the knobs is where their differences really shine. 
Um, and I will tell you my favorite uh, at the end. All right, let's go.
is the bass all the way off. better idea of its tonal spectrum. I'm going to compare the ODR1 to its green buddy, the Tube Screamer, and you'll hear the ODR1 is much bigger bottom end, and then it sort of scoops, and then you get that bite. The Tube Screamer is just a big... <laughs> that. There you go. <laughs> So my favorites, you know, to be honest, sometimes I come back to the original and think like, that's pretty good. And then other times I'll A, B and come back to the original and go like, well, that sounds maybe a little plasticky or detached from the original uh, sound. So, but at 120 bucks, if you're looking for that sound, it's really great. Uh, the Karma is, I think, a good choice if you're looking for something like the ODR one, but less aggressive. It actually sounds like a little smoother and softer for me. 
And then if you just like to like high roll, definitely the Vemoram does all of this stuff. It has a really nice cleanup, like as you go into the lower side of the gain range, it sounds really nice. And um, it sounded really good in all of the amps I've tried it through. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty good choice, but it is quite expensive. But for me, I think my favorite and the one that's gonna take over on the board is the, uh, the Way Huge STO, because it does that really nice cleanup thing like, like this. And when I'm playing it, it doesn't feel like that clean note, the clean blend is cutting through at all. And maybe it's not a clean blend, but maybe it's just like a, a, a spikiness that's in like the 2K range. The STO doesn't have that. So I feel like I could dig in a little more and then it just kind of gives me what I'm expecting from the overdrive part of it. And maybe that's something that's not exactly true to the ODR one, but I prefer it. Um, it's also not very expensive. You could find these used in that $120 range too, and I think new they're probably in the mid hundred something, because um, Way Huge and, and Dunlop have uh, nice pricing. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me know what your favorite was down below. I'd be curious to hear. Thanks for watching, we'll see you later.